Oh, no, here's our, our crank disc we made up an awful long time ago. So we'll get him mounted into place. Now, the holes on here aren't evenly spaced because uh, they had to work around where the uh, where the crank arm was going to go, where the crank pin was going to fit. So, what I might do... Right, we'll get our big seal to fit in here now. It's in there beautifully. Very happy with that. Oh, everything on this feels really, really neat. Very, very firm. This is obviously the slow moving shaft, so it's not going to be going really quick. All right, I think we'll start getting the uh, the dovetail assemblies together next. Get our dowel pins into place. All right, we'll get set up for that, and we'll bring you back. Right, I've pre-fitted the dowels for these um, dovetails. So we'll start getting these into place now. Remember the one that's on this drive side or the tailstock side is our adjusting gib. And if everything's right, I should be able to just tap that in. I've stoned these faces as well on both sides just to make sure that there's no burrs or any issues. dovetails into place. Alright. We might get our top bridge section 
into place and we'll put our, our slide plate down first and get our top bridge into place and uh, we'll see how that's fitting up right uh, let's get this crank arm into place so we've got the um, two bushes that we've made up out of um, acetyl or delrin i've just opened up that a little bit just so i can squeeze that through and we've got our crank pin that we've made up uh, that we've um, locked tied in a socket either cap screw hexagon into that and uh, we've got our little oil way you can see the little oil inside there with our oil ways coming up which is going to lubricate our bush assembly all right we'll get this back into place We might set this one on the mid throw so as you see I've got three different positions here that I'm going to throw I think we've got a maximum up to 76 millimeters then we're down to about 40 45 millimeters sorry 75 millimeters 76 millimeters on that one 45 on that one I think we're down to about 26 or 27 on that one but we'll set it to the mid range point on there we'll get a little crank pin into place now these positions can be changed without having to pull the whole assembly part apart I've got a um, a little portal hole in the slide plate that I can get access to that crank pin so I can I can release that out pull it out Rotate it around, drop this into any one of those other two points there, and then put the crank pin back in again and lock it up. The slotting head that I did for the um, bridge port is uh, an infinitely variable arrangement, so you can have anything from around about 10 millimeters of stroke up to, um, no, sorry, 20 millimeters of stroke up to uh, 76 as well. Oh, I've got a bit of lubricant onto this. Now every moving part I've got on this, I've got lubricant or lubrication points allowed for. Screwing down. Oops. Up. If all is well. That should be up and that should be reasonably free. Which it is. Right, now we can get that slide plate on. Take two for that. That's the way it's supposed to go. I won't be hitting this with a hammer to get it up into place because I can use the uh, adjustment screw to do that. But you can see how that pin, let's get a little torch onto that. That pin is going to line up with that portal hole that allows us to remove it, rotate the crank around, move the slide up or down, and then drop it into the, uh, into the next throw hole. That also allows us access to the um, to be able to lubricate the pin as well. All right, looks like uh, 
I've got a mate who's just popped in. Yeah, come in, mate. So we'll come back shortly. All right, guys, we're back after the little loop. We'll put this um, this nut back into place. Right, we'll get the bridge on next. Very happy with that. All right, but we don't know, still don't know whether it's going to work. All right, I've got to cut these dowels back a little bit, so we'll go and do that next, and then we'll get the uh, the bridge piece, the bridge piece mounted into place. Right, we'll assemble the bridge onto this. Um, I pre-fitted the screw in here because that needs to go in first. We've obviously put the nut back on, and we've trimmed the dowels back to length and they're all in place so we'll get this into place this is going down through that screw bush precision fits still not down there yet there we go right oh let's get that one nipped up now Oh no. I'll put that key one in first. Goes our key and goes our thrust washer. And that will rotate with the shaft the way it's keyed on. We've got our knob. Now I've cheated a bit here. I've, I've taken these over to a, um, a trophy engraver and I've had the, uh, the numbered steps engraved on here. So one full turn equals one millimeter. So each of the large steps is 0.1 and we've split that down to 0.02 millimeter for the small steps. So adjustment up and down. And we've got our split gib in here so that we can then get that into position and then we can then lock that up. It's just by tightening up our grub screws. Which closes up the gib. Now as I said realistically I'm probably only going to use one maybe two of these to lock it into place as you see it's a it's a very nice fit in the doubleways so yep very happy with that right uh, next job we'll do is we'll get the ram into place and we'll put the uh, top cover on then we can focus on getting the uh, the motor into place one thing i did do is uh, I set up in the mill and just put a, uh, a mark down there so that we know how far we go. So, alright, so far that's looking really beautiful. Right, let's uh, set up and get our, our ram organised. Righto, let's get our, uh, our ram into place.
see if I can crank that by hand. There she goes. Beautiful. Right, we'll get our, our cover on. I certainly hope YouTube ain't going to get upset with my neighbour playing music in the background. I guess we'll find out. That's beautiful, and I haven't got these gibs adjusted up yet, but that feels really neat. If you want to see how these gibs work, go back to one of my previous videos and you'll see how we've got these set up. I've got all the oiler sets. I'm going to put a manifold in the bottom there so that I can oil directly in from the side and up into the bottom. At the moment, when I feed into here, the oil will eventually drip down, and I've got galleyways that will feed into the bottom, but... Um, I do want to get a manifold made up. Right, so I think we're at the next stage, which is going to be um, mounting up the motor and our belts. Um, obviously at the moment I haven't got a guard for this yet. I've still got to make that. But uh, so far, so good. All right, guys, we'll, we'll bring you back when we're ready to start mounting this, uh, this motor into place. All right, we'll bring it around to the rear of the machine. So this is the, uh, the foot mount that we've made up for the um, for the motor. And we've got our, our pivots. So that's our pivoting mount to adjust the tension onto our tiny belt. Alright All right, guys, I had to take the motor off because uh, I forgot to put the um, the, uh, the bases on, the, uh, the two base feet. So uh, we'll get them on now. Um, one side is keyed through this keyway here. I'm not going to worry about this one here. This key is only here to transfer the impact load from the slotting action through the base and back to the saddle by the keyways on the other side. Um, from what I remember, it's a very, very neat fit. So let's see how we go. That's it. Right, yes, that is a shoehorn fit. Not only the keyway, but also the uh, the edge on the other side. So those cap screws in place. And I've just been going through a lot of the comments on my channel and uh, the positive comments that I've been getting. Everyone getting from a lot of people throughout this. Uh, Cancer issue has been absolutely fantastic, and I thank you all. And uh, also through the uh, the tiplets that uh, Emma and John Creasy put together, I've got a lot of new subscribers. So uh, welcome to the channel, guys. And uh, I've got a lot of interesting projects coming up after this one. So stick around. Let's see where we go. Right. Yes, that is a. Very much a sure one fit, fellas. As I said, I'm going to modify these bases and put some dovetail down the sides there because I may want to mount this in the milling machine um, and actually do slotting using the table as a base. 
putting an actuating screw between the two base plates to be able to do the, uh, the depth cutting. Right, I have stoned these faces just to make sure that there's no burrs left anywhere. So a big shout out to Emma for putting that, uh, and Emma and John for putting that uh, tiplet program together. It was uh, it was fantastic. It was a, a great event. I hope we see it again next year. It's great to be able to learn from each other. I've got some great little tips off uh, a lot of the videos that I watched. That's what it's about, isn't it? Passing on the information that we've learned through the years from others. commented it's good to see me back out in the shop well, I can tell you it's great to be back out in the shop although it a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit slow but it is great to be here right. All right, let's get that back up on his feet actually what I might do first of all before we actually mount the motor on here I need to transfer punch the holes. I've got two existing holes already in the saddle of the lathe but I want to transfer punch through so we might get this mounted up on the saddle and get that transfer set set up because I do need to take the saddle off the lathe to drill another two holes so we'll come back when I've got that ready to do. Oh, see you tick guys. Righto guys, this is a bit of a case of uh, outsmarting myself. I can't do a transfer through onto these ones because I've got the uh, the slide box in the way. So we'll just do it off the numbers. Uh, I know exactly what the centre to centres are. We'll just clock up uh, one each when I set the saddle up in the mill to, uh, to drill and tap that out. But that's sort of how it's going to look. I've taken the, uh, the top slide off just to make it easier for me to get this into place. Um, doesn't need to come off, it's just that uh, still recovering from some of that surgery, so I don't want to strain too much. It's a lot easier just to pop it on the side there and, uh, and slide it on. But, that's sort of how that slotting head is going to look on the lathe. So this allows us to set the depth for the keyway if we're cutting across and we've got the actuating knob at the top here to be able to um, set the depth if we need to do or the width I should say if we need to do any side cutting and I'll probably set up uh, an indicating arrangement on this uh, to make that a lot more accurate I don't have to worry about the backlash and the screw all right so we'll get this back off the uh, off the saddle and uh, we'll start uh, start manning the motor Alright, so we've got our motor mounted back into place. We'll, we'll get our tensioning mechanism set up. I'm to excuse my head getting in the way here. I just need to see how things are sort of lining up. Let's see that little twist it down, okay. Sure won't fit, but there. All right. Feels really good. Well, that's basically assembly complete. I do need to make up a guard, obviously, to go on the uh, 
an atomic bolt assembly here. But uh, what I think we might do now is um, get that uh, VFD set up and we'll get that tuned up and uh, we'll see if we can make it work. We'll give it a dry run. Alright guys, I'll, uh, I'll get that VF VFD wired in and, uh, and um, programmed and we'll see how we go. Alrighty guys, I've got the VFD um, wired up and I've got it tuned in. Um, we'll, uh, I guess, <laughs> without further ado, we'll give it a go. Let's just back the speed off. Uh, this is the variable speed too. And that for me is about the speed that I want to slot at. That is beautiful. All right, very, very happy with that. Very, very happy with that. What I might do is um, I'll screw this down to the low point and we'll screw it up to the uh, highest point and uh, the extent of the travels and, and we'll see how it looks. All right, that's right down the deck now. So that's its, uh, uh, at its lowest point uh, on the actuation. So let's just see how that goes. Oh yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Alright. I'll screw it all the way up and uh, we'll see what it's like at the top. Alright guys, it's all the way to the top, so I've got 40 millimeters of stroke so I can actually come 20 millimeters either side or center on my lathe. In reality, you're only going to be moving this, you know, a couple of mil. It's only so that you can side cut the keyway. So if you've got a standard six millimeter um, um, tool in there to cut your keyway, you can come a couple of mil one way, a couple of mil the other way, and open that up to 10 mil or, you know, up to 12 mil or 16 mil. So in reality, this is only going to be moved a, a few mil uh, off the center of the, uh, the lathe. Right, let's see how that goes, shall we? That's beautiful. Beautiful. This has actually got 50 millimetres of stroke on it. Oh, I am just wrapped with that. That is just beautiful. Magnificent. Very, very, very happy. I'll right, bring it back to roughly centre for my lathe and uh, we'll give it one more run. All right, let's just give it uh, one final run before we sign off. All right, guys. Just before I do go, um, that's the oil that I'm using for the uh, for the worm drive component of this gearbox. It's a it's a high board um, ADW90 um, extreme pressure. So it's got a, an extreme bearing pressure package put into this oil. Um, I've used this on some extreme applications, um, just home design stuff that I've done, and I've had no issues with it. I don't expect to have any issues with this on the uh, on the worm drive. So that's what we've got inside. All right, fellas, this has given me a lot of heart, seeing this bench test uh, run so smoothly and exactly as designed. Um, 
I'll see how we go on the lathe when we're running. I'm fairly happy with that speed. I, I like to run these sorts of things a little bit slow. They're not what you call highly rigid, and if you do run them too quick, you will get vibration. And I do run the sliding head on my bridge port that, uh, that I designed. You might have seen in one of my previous videos. Uh, I do run that fairly slow just to minimize any vibration. Um, speed increase, I've got this running at about 60 hertz uh, maximum speed. I can change these pulleys around. I did buy a second set of these pulleys so I can put the larger one on the top and another smaller one on the bottom quite comfortably. Um, but we'll see how it goes anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, <coughs> that little uh, bench test has given me a lot of heart, so very, very happy with that. All right, guys, we'll see you soon with some other projects. And uh, as I said, we'll modify the saddle to get this mounted up and we'll, uh, we'll have a crack at mounting uh, at, uh, at cutting a keyway in my actual lathe. Let's see how it pans out. Alright guys, see you soon. Mm -hmm.